Hey guys, and welcome back to the channel. So this morning we have another pairing. Uh, this pairing is, yes, a, what is this? 87 cc, 88 cc against a 92 cc. So a little unfair of a pairing, but uh, I have to say that the Husqvarna G288 held its own. Uh, this machine here is completely stock, except for uh, a muffler mod just opening up the uh, extra little port right here, okay? So not a whole lot done to it. Uh, beyond that, it's completely stock. It's running, yes, a VersaCut 20 inch bar. Uh, again, I do a lot of chainsaw milling. That's what all this is about. I build my home with it. I sell it to construction companies and uh, it's my practical application. I can't tell you how many people I have, just passer buyers, rude people basically, I've learned the public, I've worked with the public throughout the years many times. I worked for the county and a uh, uh, small, very small amount of public can be very hateful. And so it doesn't bother me. But uh, I say, put a longer bar on it, put a longer bar. It's my application. It's how I use my saws. Uh, I've got quite a, quite a, uh, a, uh, a bar collection actually. Um, I've got 36 inch bars that could go on this, 28 inch bars uh 25s so on and so forth but and same thing with these i can put i got 36 inch bars that can go on these i may have said 32 i meant 36 on the husqvarna uh but and i use them for downing uh that's the practical application for a 36 inch bar would be uh while downing uh, a tree falling a tree and so but use them how you guys want uh, I get questions a lot on bar size, uh, what's appropriate for a certain saw. And, you know, uh, matter of fact, a uh, gentleman just asked me the other day, he lives in Northern California. And uh, oftentimes, and then the wood up there is huge. Uh, I used to live, in, I'm from originally from Newport Beach, California. And uh, I had family up north. And I'm going to tell you, uh, you want to see some big woods going up there, uh, some of the biggest in the world. And so, if you come across a cut that you need to run a, a much larger bar than your saw is uh, tagged for, well, you run it. Uh, uh, nothing wrong with running a longer bar for some some cuts. You know what I mean? Uh, just as it's nothing wrong with running a a, a, bar, a shorter bar, guys. But let's get back to the comparison. So it's running a, a Versa Cut 20 inch, and this one, and actually this one is still new. It hasn't even been started. I'm sure they started at quality control who this would be the person that quality controlled it. I haven't even had this off of it. Just barely took, just took it out of the box. Let's see. So what they, a lot of times what a, a Pharmac will do, and this is actually your warranty certificate. So when you guys get these saws, keep this. Okay. This is one of the things that are going to help you, uh, you need to write your serial. This is the quality control, the checker, okay, that when it came from the factory. You need to write your security uh, serial number, which can be found right here, okay, and the date, okay, and then keep your invoice. If you purchase it through Amazon, they provide you an invoice. Go to your invoice section. If you bought it straight from them, just keep a, a good screenshot of the actual purchase. They also, you can go, if you purchase it straight from Neotech and if you need parts or that kind of stuff for your machine, you don't necessarily need this, although this is going to be nice to have, okay? Uh, when I sell these locally, this is gold, okay? So basically what this does, okay, is when, if I have issues with their saws, I can fulfill the service agreement, okay, through this certificate, okay? They bring it back, uh, basically depending on who buys the saw from me and how that goes. Uh, if it's defective, then, which I've had no issues with so far. Uh, well, one small problem, but it was actually user error. Uh, and I fixed the problem, didn't even need Neotech involved. But uh, they'll send me the parts, I do the labor, okay? And depending on what the saw is being used for, professional or local, or just you know farm use or whatever uh how far out i'll go with that okay and uh but basically within that warranty what i do is i do free labor for it and neotech sends me the parts 
you know, fairly uh, uneventful. So this machine right here in this clip is gonna be carrying a 25 inch, actual 24 inch bar. And this one's running a 20. So, uh, you know, if they were both running 20s, I think this one would have outran it even a little bit more. Uh, but let's go ahead and cut to that clip and we'll come back to talk about it some more. There you have it. Pretty good comparison, guys. Uh, for a uh, 88 cc saw to keep up with a 92 cc saw like that is quite impressive, actually. So, uh, you know, these smaller cc saws compared to some of our big ones. Now, the more practical we talk, I talk a lot about practical application for these chainsaws, right? The more practical pairing would have been the 395, 394, okay. And uh, so we don't currently have one on hand and we're gonna have one, we'll do a comparison with those. I don't know guys, we'll see. Uh, so stay tuned for that. Uh, I have a feeling that the uh, big brother of this 288 would outrun the 92 CC. Uh, now outrun the big bore 90, uh, big bore 660s? Probably not. So, but stay tuned, we, we'll see, okay? Uh, but I'm going ahead and using this one as a show, as a comparison because the actual cut, uh, the actual video cut that you guys seen, or clip rather, uh, was the other one that I have, the exact same saw, but I have a pipe on it now. And we're getting ready to tear it down, and put a big bore on it, okay? So uh, it's not the same saw anymore. This is actually the saw that it would have compared to, if that makes any sense right now. So, yes, sir. So, it, pretty good comparison. It really is. Uh, I can tell you that this one is about, oh, uh, almost a pound lighter, the, two, the G288, uh, a Host Farmer 288, it's about a pound lighter. Uh, and, but I can tell you as far as, as, as using a saw, this full wrap is, is very nice, is very nice. Uh, I, I don't, I, I don't, I've got to the point where if I'm gonna run a saw, a big saw, I want the full wrap. Um, absolutely do want the full wrap. And uh, so, uh, it's great. I had a gentleman tell me that you can actually, I've been building those uh, 381s, uh, still clone 381s from Neotech. And I guess you can put a, make sure I get this correct, a 440 full wrap on those. I think it takes just a little bit of a tweak to the handlebar as far as the, you guys get what I'm saying, as mounting it, uh, but they will fit on a 381 chassis. Uh, we're gonna confirm that. Uh, but the gentleman that told me is very reliable. He's from another channel. And so uh, I appreciate him pointing that out uh, because uh, it really enhances the not only the, the, the look of the saw, but because they look cool on there, they do. Uh, but it also, as far as the function of the saw, it helps a lot. It really does. It helps a lot. So, yes, sir. So that's what we're doing. Uh, pretty good comparison. It really is. Uh, you know, I'm gonna start doing some comparisons, basically out comparing certain saws, just to show you that some of the, the smaller CCs, so if you got a much larger CC saw compared to a smaller, you know, 10 to even maybe 20, 30 CCs less, how much they actually keep up. So many of you guys work daily with these saws. And so uh, there's a lot more that goes into running a saw than just CC. Um, how much it weighs i mean i mean i'm talking these 660s are very very heavy okay um another thing that goes into it is fuel i was talking with another one of the subscribers uh yesterday and we were talking about how thirsty <laughs> these 660s are i mean the 288 is not lacking any thirsty but uh so the 660s are very very thirsty so when you chainsaw mill with a 660 you better get ready to, to uh, fork out some fuel into it, okay? To where I can also uh, mill with 372 big bore or even uh, 50, 50 uh, millimeter, uh, 72 cc, and doesn't cost as much in fuel. Uh, I know you're thinking, well, how, you know, how kind of a cheapskate, right? No, man, I'm gonna tell you it adds up. It absolutely adds up. Uh, matter of fact, the gentleman that I was talking with, uh, about the uh, fuel consumption, he's used to running a 250 uh, steel. 
and you mix up a gallon and it'll last you the year, right? Um, especially for a homeowner. Uh, that's not what he was saying, but just say, you know, he's used to making gallons. When you start running 660s, you better be making up bare minimum two gallon mixtures or five gallon mixtures, okay? I mix up five at a time. I just do. I go through a lot of fuel, so. Um, so yeah, the, how thirsty they are. Another good comparison. And we're gonna run a 311 on a, uh, on my Norwood chainsaw mill just to give a demonstration because I have a guy that wants to buy an OEM saw, okay, and run it on a, a chainsaw, Alaskan chainsaw mill. And he wants to know, because he wants a professional grade saw that he feels that the, uh, oh, the seals and all this will keep up. And it's what he's comfortable with buying. So I'm gonna do a, a demonstration with the 311 on the chainsaw mill, okay, right? But it'll be running a 20 inch bar, which is what you use for the Norwood PM14, okay? and uh trust and believe now the one i have is modified okay it's got a it's had the exhaust muffler modified and that kind of stuff so uh if you buy a 311 and you want to mill with it you're going to have to do some similar uh modifications to get it to run like this one does uh when i it showed up here for my buddy ram outdoors it was it was all factory uh completely stock and it was a sluggish little sucker. It was. It, I mean, reminded me of a 45cc saw. And it doesn't run like that anymore. Matter of fact, a spoiler alert, we have a comparison coming up again, yet again, of an of a Echo 590 and it. And it outruns the 590 now. Okay? Now, that's in the way I have them set up. They're both modded the same types of ways, except for the 590 doesn't have an aftermarket carburetor on it. Okay? And I did some... Um, tricks in, to the new carburetor on the uh, 311 to make it run like that. Um, but so there you have it. So we'll be doing that in the next few days. But also going to be doing a big bore on this, not this one, but one like exactly like this uh, with the noisy cricket pipe. And uh, it's going to have a big bore on it. So I'm going to be straightforward about this crazy, noisy, crazy cricket pipe. Crazy cricket pipe. Noisy cricket pipe. Um, the three, the three seventy twos react wonderful to it. I mean, it actually, absolutely, just makes it a different machine. Okay, a whole different machine. Um, matter of fact, I have a video of my three seventy two gray one on TikTok right now. That's at almost three hundred thousand views. It just keeps going. Like I think the counters broke. Um, it doesn't really mean nothing. It's just a lot of views, guys, on for a uh, a chainsaw. But. It reacts well with the 372. I did a noisy cricket pipe on one of these, and it did. I mean, it it it, it definitely enhanced it, okay? To the point that the 372 was enhanced? No, it doesn't. So I'm going to put a big bore on that one and see how the pipe reacts to it. I may end up just doing a slug hole, cutting off the pipe portion of it and leaving the inch uh, slug hole coming out of it or putting a different muffler on it. So but like I said, guys, I've always told you guys, if I, if, if I find something that doesn't work, I'm gonna share it but uh I'm gonna leave it on there until I install the big board and we're gonna see how that reacts with it if it doesn't I'm gonna cut it off to a slug hole if I don't like that I'm gonna go back to a modified uh, muffler so um but yeah so there you have it that's the pairing for today we kind of got off subject there a little bit uh but uh, a little shop talk a little comparison video uh, again as always guys I appreciate you guys all tuning in uh, the channel has grown big time since we started just uh about four months ago and really in the beginning the first month it was me and a couple people that was it so it's really grown in the last few months and so i appreciate all the support from both uh youtube and tiktok uh, you guys are excellent and uh, basically just showing you guys what i'm doing here local i uh so we're getting ready to get into spring is going to be here before we know it and we'll be doing some a lot of chainsaw milling uh i have a bandsaw showing up a new new bandsaw showing up uh, here in about another month, and we're going to be doing a lot of rough cut building. Um, much better builder than I am a chainsaw builder, and so uh, we're going to be putting a mother-in-law house into the back part of our house into a tree house, and uh, that's going to be an actual house uh, in our tree in the backyard. So you guys stay tuned for that. Uh, but I appreciate you guys tuning in, and. Uh, Again, I said something yesterday that I want to reiterate today. If you guys have a dream you want to chase, get out there and chase it. Life is short. Make it happen. Stop delaying. Make it happen, guys. 
And so, uh, again, I appreciate everybody tuning in. As always, stay safe.